in this video we will discuss the problem find all distinct subset sum the problem says that we will be given a set of integers and we have to find all the distinct sum that can be generated from the subset of the given set okay so suppose if we have been given the subset as let's say 2 and 1 okay if you have been given an uh, like the set overall set as 2 and 1 so what are the possible subsets that we can generate one of the subsets can be that empty subset another another subset can contain just one another subset can contain just two or another subset can contain both the elements that is both two and one and these are the possibilities now the sum of this subset is zero the num sum of this subset is one the sum of this subset is two and the sum of this subset is nothing but three so overall i will have all these uh, like sums of the various subsets so basically the sum will be zero one of the subset then one two and three so if i will see at the answer so i can see that zero one two and three all the answers are there right and what are the total number of subsets that i have generated you will observe that if the size was two then i have generated four subsets so that is nothing but two to the power n but let's try and observe this with the help of another example uh, for a bigger case let's say if we have been given the data and we have been given something like three then we have been given seven and six suppose we have been given this particular thing so one of the subsets can be empty subset another subset can be just three another subset can be just seven another subset can be just six another subset can be three comma seven another subset can be three comma six now notice that you will not say that seven comma three is another distinct subset because we are talking about subsets and not permutations right another subset can be seven comma six right and another subset can be seven comma six comma like seven like three comma seven comma six right so basically how many subsets i have one two three four five six seven and eight so when the size was three then i have total eight subsets so that is nothing but two to the power three that is eight subsets right but how do i generate all subsets so whenever you have to think of generating all possible subsets or whenever you have to think about generating all possibilities that is here we have to generate all possible subsets right here what we have to do is we have to generate all possible subsets right when we have to generate all possible subsets then what comes to our mind the concept that comes to our mind is nothing but recursion right because it will help us to generate all the possible subsets or all the possible scenarios let's see how so what we will be doing here is let's say if we have this uh, particular thing given to us let's say three is given let's say 6 is given and then 7 is given right so what we'll first of all do is we'll start start from the very first uh, element that is 7 uh, like that is 3 and initially the subset will be empty then for 3 i have two choices like why was like why did we took 2 to the power 3 why did we have eight subsets because for every element you have two choices either to take that particular element or not take that particular element that is why it was nothing but 2 to the power 3 that is 8 right so what you will be doing is initially you will say that okay the subset will be empty and you will start from three so for three what are the two choices either you take three or you don't take three so if you don't take three then the subset remains empty if you take three then three comes inside the subset okay after that you move to the next index so what you do here is you move to six then here also you have two choices either you don't take six or you take six right and for this recursive call also you have two choices either you don't take six or you take six in your subset so it becomes three comma six right right after this what you will do is you will move to the next point so you'll move to seven now once you move to seven so for seven also for every recursive call you have two choices either you take seven or you don't take seven so if you don't take seven it remains empty if you take seven then it becomes seven right if you don't take seven then it remains six if you take seven then it becomes what it becomes six comma seven similarly here if you don't take seven it remains three if you take seven it becomes three comma seven right similarly here also if you don't take 7 it remains 3 comma 6 or if you take 7 it becomes what 3 comma 6 comma 7 right so if you will see here after that what will happen after that i'll move my pointer again so when i move my pointer now so what happens where is my i pointing to if i see this is index 0 this is index 1 this is index 2 this is in, this is index 3 so now my index i points to what now my index i is pointing to nothing but the end that is i is equal to 3 that is the size of the given array and now i do not have any other element so when i is equal to the size of the given array that is i is equal to n you can say in that case i have generated all the possible subsets right but this is one thing this is just the tip of the iceberg because we did not wanted the subsets we actually wanted their sum so in that case how will we approach it 
So let's quickly find that out and see what we'll be doing here. But before this, there's another thing. Suppose if we have been given that data, suppose if we have been given like 0, 1, 2 and 3 and suppose we find the subsets. So one of the subsets can be 3 alone, another subset can be 1 comma 2. Now the sum of this subset is 3 and the sum of this subset is also 3. But the problem says that I have to find all the distinct sum. So if three, if the sum three is repeating multiple number of times, so I have to print it only one time. And which data structure comes to your mind? When I say that you have to take only one occurrence of a particular element and not multiple occurrences. Yes, the subset, like the data structure that must be coming to your mind must be nothing but the set data structure. So I'll also be taking the help of the set data structure. But before that, let's quickly uh, see what we'll be doing here. So let's suppose that we were given the elements as 3, 1 and 2, suppose that, okay. So initially we'll be starting from this element. So initially what will be the subset sum? Initially the sum will be 0. Now if I don't take 3, right, if I'm standing at this ith element 3, if I don't take 3 then the subset sum remains 0 only. If I take 3 then what happens? The subset sum becomes what? The subset sum becomes 0 plus 3, that is nothing but 3, okay. After this I'll move to the next element. When I move to 1, so again for every recursive call I have a choice either to take it or not take it. If I don't take it, then it remains 0. If I take it, then it becomes 1. Okay. Here also, if I don't take it, it remains 3. If I take 1, then it becomes 3 plus 1. That is nothing but 4. Okay. After this, I'll move to the next index. So, I move to this 2. Okay. Now, if I don't take 2, then I uh, it remains 0 only. If I take 2, then the sum becomes 2. If I don't take 2, then the sum remains 1 only. Right. Notice that this is indicating nothing but every time I'm indicating the sum, the subset sum not the elements. Now, if I take 2 in the subset, then the sum becomes 3. If I don't take 2 in the subset, the sum remains 3 here. If I take 2 in the subset, then the sub, uh, sum becomes 5. If I don't take 2, then the sum remains 4. If I take uh, 2, then the sum becomes 6. Okay. Now, you will observe that after that, what will happen? My i will reach the end. And whenever my i reaches the end, then the sum, this is nothing but the sum, right? This is nothing but stored. Everything is stored in the sum variable. So, here the sum is 0. So, I'll store it in my subset. Okay. After that, 2 is there. So, I'll store it in my subset. After that, 1 is there. I'll store it in my subset. Like, I, I'll store it basically in my set. So, basically in the set, it will be in ascending order. But currently, I'm storing it like this. Then, I'll store 3. Then, if I see another 3, so I'll not store it because it is duplicate. Then, I'll store 5. Then, I'll store 4. Then, I'll store 6. So, whenever I reach the end, whenever I exhaust the array, whenever i is equal to the n value, that is the size of the array, then I will be storing the elements, uh, the sums into my subset. And that is what I'll be doing. And in this way, I can see that I'll be getting all the answers and then I'll put it into an into a vector or an array or an array list and then I'll simply return the answer, right? That is the basic recursive approach. So let's quickly write this and then we will see what are the drawbacks and how we can uh, identify them and how we can clear them as well. So what, we, what I'll be doing here is, first of all, I will require a set as I said. So I'll say that, okay, I'll have a set int st, right? And then I will also require nothing but a vector int answer that will help me to return the answer in a vector or an array list in case of Java. Okay. Then I'll call a recursive function. I'll start from the zeroth index. I'll pass the nums array, right? I'll pass the set and I'll pass the initial sum as zero, as I said. Okay. Then what I will do is, uh, like my, uh, like after this, I'll call the recursive call and what I will be doing is I'll say that, okay, void recursion. All right. And then I'll say that int i, I'll be uh, at the ith index. I'll pass the vector, so vector int nums, I'll pass the nums vector that will consist of the elements and I'll pass the set as well, uh, all using the, like all I'll, all the, like the set and the vector I'll be passing using the pass by reference, okay? And I'll pass the sum as well, the current sum, okay? Now, what is the base case here? The base case is that if my i is equal equal to nums dot size, so if I reach the end of the array, in that case, I will simply say that I will insert that particular sum into my array and if that sum is duplicate, then it will not uh, repeat inside the set and then I'll return from the call. Otherwise, what are the opportunities that I have? Otherwise, one time I'll call the recursion for the next element and I'll pass the nums array, I'll pass the set and I will not include the ith element in my sum, okay? As, I, as you can see in the diagram as well, one time if my sum is 3, then I'm not including, suppose I was standing at 1, then I'm not including 1 and the sum remains 3 only and one time I'm including 1, the sum becomes 4. So, if I'm not including the ith element, in that case, the sum remains the same and I'll pass it one time and if I'm including it, then I'll pass i plus 1, I'll pass the nums array, I'll pass the set and I'll pass the sum plus array of i, uh, like sum plus nums of i. 
because one time I'll be including the ith element and one time I'll not include. So this is when I'm a, when I'm including, right? So this is when I'm including the ith element and this is when I'm excluding, right? Excluding the ith element from the set. Okay, that is what I'll be doing. And once I have done this, so my set will get updated with the values. And what I want to do is now I'll declare simply an answer and I'll put all the values of this set inside the answer, right? Inside the array list or the vector. So I can do in C like this. Basically, I'll write a uh, vector int answer and I'll say that st dot uh, begin. Okay. I'll everything that is inside the set, I'll directly push, uh, like I'll directly insert it inside the vector. Okay. That is the array list or the vector. And then I'll return the answer. Now let us try and compile this code to see if it works or not. Let's quickly see that. So now let's let's compile this to see what happens. Okay. So we are missing some colon. Okay. So we are missing a colon here. Let's quickly put it. Now let's try and compile it and see what happens. So you can see it works on the samples. Let us try and submit this. So you will be able to observe here that we are getting the error and the error is nothing but time limit exceeded. Why are we getting a time limit exceeded? Because if we talk about recursion, then in that case, there are a lot of overlapping sub problems, right? Because if we talk about recursion, then in this case, there are two parameters that are repeat that, that are changing. The I parameter is changing and the sum is changing, right? So when I talk about this, let's quickly consider one other another case. If you know that we can take out the Fibonacci numbers using recursion, right? So if I want the, like, if I suppose I want the Fibonacci number for n, nth Fibonacci number, then I'll write a base case that suppose if n is equal to 1 or if n is equal to 2, suppose in that case I'm returning a 1, that is, that is I'm saying that the first or the second Fibonacci number is nothing but 1 and the remaining Fibonacci numbers follows, okay? So in this case, if uh, if I want the, if it is not the base case, in that case, you will return what? You will return f of n minus 1 plus f of n minus 2. That is what you do usually. Now, in this case, what happens? If you try to remember, so what will happen here is, if I try to call for it, so if I call for f of 6, suppose. So in that case, I'll call for f of 5 and I'll call for f of 4, right? If I try to find, if I try to find f of 5, so I'll call for f of 4 and I'll call for f of 3. If I try to find f of 4, so I'll call for f of 3. I'll call for f of 2. Okay. Similarly, if I try to find f of 4, so I'll call for f of 3. I'll call for f of 2. Here also, I'll call for f of 2 and I'll call for f of 1. Okay. Here also, I'll call for f of 2. Here also, I'll call for f of 1. Right. That is what I'll be doing here. For f of 3 also, I'll call for f of 2 and f of 1. Now, if you will observe in this particular recursion, so what is happening? There are a lot of problems that are already calculated. If you see here, f of 4 is already calculated here. If you have already calculated it here, so you can see that the complexity of this approach will be 2 to the power n because every time the number of calls are increasing two times. Exponentially, it is increasing. Here it was 1, then it became 2, then it became 4 and so on and so forth, right, for the bigger, larger cases. So, in this case, if you have already calculated f of 4 here, so will you again go down and calculate f of 4 again? No, you will not do that. So, that is nothing but dp. That is, you are having overlapping sub-problems. And in this problem also, your i is changing and sum is changing. So, you are having overlapping sub problems. So, here also you will use the dp and if a particular state i comma sum is already calculated, then you will not calculate it again. So, you will mark it as minus 1 initially indicating that it is not calculated. If it is not calculated, then you will calculate it, store it and next time you will not calculate it further again. Okay. So, what we will be doing here is we will be declaring a dp and what will be the dimensions of our dp? So, the dimensions are, of our dp will be nothing but i i and the sum. So, i is going till where? i is going till 10, like 100. So, I can say that I will first of all the first dimension like dp will be for i and i and the sum. So, i will go maximum till 100, uh, 101 because uh, 100 is the range given. So, if uh, like size is 100, so I can take it till 101. And if the numbers are going till like if the maximum capacity that the number can go is 10 to the power 2. Okay. So, if the largest value of nums of i can be equal to 100. Then you will think that, okay, let's take the sum as 100, but that will not be the case. Because suppose if the number of elements are 100 and all the 100 elements are like the maximum number of elements that I can have is 100. And if, uh, if, I, if any, if a particular element, if suppose every element is equal to 100, if, uh, if one element is equal to 100, right? So there, suppose there are 100 elements in the worst case, if all the elements are present, right? So in that case, 100 elements will have the sum as 100 into 100. That is nothing but 10 to the power 4. So that is why the sum of all the 100 elements, like if one element is having the sum as 100 and there are 100 elements. So in that case, the sum will be 10 to the power 4, correct? 
okay so that is why what i'll be doing here is i'll be declaring the sum for sum i'll have 10 to the power 4 so 1 2 3 and then 4 so i'll having uh, 10 to the power 4 for in having the sum then what i will do here is i'll initialize every state as minus 1 so i'll say that i'll use a mem set basically i will mark every dp of i and some state every dp of i and some state that is there i'll mark it as minus 1 so for this in c++ i'll be using the mem set so i'll say that mem set okay dp comma minus 1 comma size of dp that is what i'll be doing here so basically i'll initialize every dimension or uh, like every i comma sum as minus 1 initially and then what i will be doing here is i'll simply check that if the dp of i and the sum if it is uh, not equal to minus 1 okay if it is not equal to minus 1 so that means it must have been already calculated in that case i'll simply return i'll not calculate the for the particular i and sum i'll not calculate it again if it is not calculated in that case what i'll do is i'll call the recursion and then after calling the recursion i'll update my dp of i and the sum okay i'll update my dp of i and sum as nothing but let's say one indicating that okay it has been calculated and in that case i will save myself from calculating a lot of overlapping sub problems or a lot of recursive uh, calls that might already have been calculated okay now let's try and compile this code to see if it works or not okay it works on the samples let us try and submit this code as well so you can observe that our solution is working for all the test cases now and it gets accepted now talking about the time complexity of this approach so the time com complexity overall of this approach will be nothing but order of n into sum okay because there are two dimensions that are changing that is nothing but i and the sum and uh, it is going maximum till n and sum sum of the array okay uh, now another thing is the space complexity so since we are having a 2 2d dp which is of dimension n cross n so it will be nothing but n cross the sum okay because the first dimension is n and the second dimension is sum in case if you understood this explanation so make sure to hit the like button and comment down understood as well thank you